ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you joining me for another day in the Lord's creation. This is the day that the Lord's made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for tuning in, whoever you are, wherever you are. I'm going to start out with reading in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Glory, hallelujah. Now I'm going to flip on over to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Wherein, in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Who are the children of disobedience? Those that don't walk with God, those that lean to their own understanding, following the doctrine and wisdom of men. Verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We were once like the children of disobedience also. We may still be in our walks with God, Verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Amen. And hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. God's good all the time, folks. He's rich in mercy. His love is great with which he loves us. So now I'm going to read Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. What does salt do? Salt adds flavor. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. If salt doesn't have any flavor, throw it away. It's not any good. Ye are the light of the world, us, the children of God. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. We're supposed to let our lights shine. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now remember, Jesus is always speaking in parables. There's the hidden wisdom and the great mystery of God. He didn't come to destroy the law. The law of what? The law of God. But to fulfill the law of God. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. 
But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Or to listen in all things, to pay attention, to observe. Don't think your brother's a fool. Jesus is our brother. They all thought he was a fool to the point they had him crucified and killed on the cross. They didn't agree with the things that he said, the things that he did, the reformation created within the church. Agree with thine adversary quickly. Verse 25, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Remember, if you believe in the Lord, you and your household shall be saved. That just saves you, though. You can also inherit the kingdom of heaven. You can also inherit the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus wasn't a fool. He was careful with what he said. He chose specifically the words that he spoke as to not reveal the great mystery of God and the hidden wisdom of God. He was enemies of a lot of the Jews. He converted some to follow him, but the Pharisees and the scribes didn't like Jesus. They collaborated with the Romans to have him executed. So here in verse 20, he says that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees and scribes, you shall not in any case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, where's the kingdom of heaven? Nobody knows. When we die, we're judged, and we may make it to heaven. But Ecclesiastes tells us in the same word of God that no man knows the things past and no man knows the things to come. All share one breath as one dies, so the other dies. And all we can be sure of is that we come from the dust and we return to the dust. And unless your righteousness exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees, the same people that Jesus was trying to reform and invoke a Holy Spirit within them, mind you, they wanted Jesus out of there. Unless you're more righteous than the same people that executed our brother who we're supposed to be following, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Think about it. Then you can inherit the kingdom of God. What does the word of God say? What does Jesus say? Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's here now. He is alive. This is all God's and his Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is here now. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Come down to us now. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God is here with us. Glory, hallelujah. He says, agree with thine adversary quickly. Verse 25. Whilst thou art in the way with him, who's thine adversary? Anybody that's not following the word of God. For Jesus, his adversaries were the scribes and the Pharisees. The same ones he said, unless you're more righteous than them, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Think about it, folks. Agree with them. Agree with your enemies. Bless your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Why? Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Don't argue with a fool. Don't argue with somebody that doesn't follow the word of God. Don't argue with your adversary. Agree with thine adversary while thou art in the way with him. If anybody has a problem with anything you're doing, be quick. To apologize, be quick to see how you can resolve any quarrels, any issues. Avoid foolish jesting, avoid disputations of the Word of God. I apologize, I didn't mean to offend you. I'll be more careful next time. Verse 26 Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost.
farthing, the least amount. Come out of where? Prison? Your bond? Because the verse before, he's saying the judge delivered thee the officer and thou be cast into the prison. Who's the judge? The scribes and the Pharisees. Those who deny Jesus is the son of God. Those that hold the money, that make the laws. The laws of who? The laws of men, not the law of God. Verse 27, ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. This is the Holy Spirit. Now the same scribes and Pharisees who are righteous and the lawmakers and the judges and the officers who hold the keys of Jesus' freedom in their hands don't agree with Jesus. Hey, I can look, I can think, as long as I don't touch her, there ain't nothing wrong with it. I can sit here and have dirty, filthy thoughts in my head all day and think, mm, 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 mm. And I'm not transgressing the law, but Jesus says, no. If you even think it in your heart, you've already committed adultery to God. This is the Holy Spirit, the spirit that the Pharisees and scribes don't believe in. But us, as followers of Jesus, knowing that none is righteous, not one, and all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Have the Holy Spirit guide us and trust in the word of God and Jesus' words and seek continually to meditate on the word, to pray without ceasing with God that he may fill us with his Holy Spirit so we can be children of God and experience the greatness of God, the freedom of God, without the perversion of the world, without the evil intent, but rather having love in all we do, no matter what we do. Verse 29, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. But Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice with his life on the cross. But Paul made a sacrifice too by going to prison. For what? Doing the work of Jesus. Paul said, I am a prisoner to Jesus Christ. I'm willing to go to jail for the things that I believe in. What are you doing for God that risks your freedom? What are you doing for God that's rocking the boat? Jesus died for us? Paul went to prison for Jesus? And you just sit there following the laws and the wisdom of men, the doctrine of men that God says, unless you're more righteous than them, you're not gonna inherit the kingdom of heaven. Unless you're more righteous than those that executed our Savior, you're not going to make it to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says that, but the kingdom of God is at hand now. If thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. Remember, we're body of Christ with many members. If your foot's hurting you, cut that thing off and put that hot iron to it and let it heal back because that foot might cost you the whole body. This is one nation under God. Glory, hallelujah. We're supposed to be following Jesus, seeking him in all that we do, trusting him, leaning not onto our own understanding, but we do. We try to understand everything. We try to believe we have it all figured out, or we know better than the most high. If thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Like I said before, to me, the only thing I can relate to in this human experience, the most hell thing I've ever experienced, is being locked up in that jail cell. That's hell to me. So it's better that Paul made the sacrifice and went to jail than for Jesus and all his disciples to have been locked up. It hath been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. It hath been said, this is the laws of men. It hath been said, 
This is what the laws of men say. But I say unto you, Jesus, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Now, fornication is adultery. Now, if you think of it as the body of Christ and your hand has offended you, so you cut your hand off and throw it into the fire, or your eye has offended you, so you pluck it out and throw it into the fire. Remember, we are the body of Christ. My finger offended me, so I cut it off and threw it into the fire. Well, my finger had another finger. It was married to the hand. You see what I'm saying? I cut that finger off and threw it into the fire. Well, now the hand doesn't have a finger. If I put a new finger in there with that hand to make it whole again, I've committed adultery. Let God do the work. Be there for the family of God, for the children of God, for the body of Christ. What God gives, God can take. It's all up to God. It's not our spot to do the work of God, only to hold up the family of God, waiting for God to repair those things that have been damaged. Verse 33, again ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. Verse 34, but I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. Amen. Who's inheriting the kingdom of heaven? The scribes and the Pharisees, the money men, the lawmakers. That's the throne of God. And they hold the keys to our freedom. They can make up laws that go against God. And they have the power because men seeking that paycheck, seeking that security of what money will come and execute me and send me to hell because I violated a law that the scribes and the Pharisees made. But they sit on God's throne, waiting on the kingdom of heaven. But Jesus told us in his word that the kingdom of God is at hand, that he is alive now. Glory, hallelujah, praise the Lord. We got to wake up, we got to get back to God, we got to unite in Christ. That's all that I have to say for now. God be with you, man. I'm telling you, this is the good word. Study to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of God. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can convert all those scribes and all those Pharisees into children of God, into men of God, understanding that the kingdom of God is here and now, and that all these laws, all this wisdom and doctrine of men will never compare to what we already have. God bless you all. Have a good day. I'll see you guys soon.